Welcome back to Luminato Live here. We're on uh, Wednesday uh, talking to artists behind the scenes uh, related to our evening program. Uh, I have with me Trey Armstrong, choreographer, actor, and uh, dancer. Um, and uh, we have some questions from the audience that we're going to ask her and uh, we're going to talk about Keys on the Street, the show that uh, she's helped to organize tonight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think uh, I'm going to cluster these up because they're, they're kind of connected. Okay. Um, Hello. How are you doing? Um, they will let you know. They will answer uh, with an email. This is all digital. So uh, we get, we get their, their feedback to you and uh, perhaps feedback to the show that you've organized uh, after the fact okay. and, and when they show up. Um, I'd like to know how Trey Armstrong choreographed Debussy's Claire de Lune. It's such a lovely piece of music. That's mm. from Heidi Moe. Mm. I just, yeah, and then mm. I'm going to cluster these other questions. Okay. So, hi Heidi. Thanks for your question. Um, the idea with Keys on the Street, because it's a symbiosis of classical music and a street dance, predominantly freestyle dance, it, I had to be very careful not to over choreograph which means I, I didn't want to choreograph every single step. I think a lot of the organic beauty came in the freeness of the movement of the dancers. So I had a concept, and the concept was taken directly from the music itself. It's so clear, Claire de Lune. And so a show like this at night, it just made sense to have the moonlight um, depicted in my show. And the dancer is basically dancing under twilight. However, it's a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde piece. So he starts as one character and then transforms into another character. And we watch his process and his evolution throughout that piece as he dances under the moonlight and then transforms through warp speed into the creature of the night that he is. Well, this connects directly to the work that is being uh, uh, presented tonight that has never been done before. And, and Angela Hewitt's mm. um, role as a, as a pianist on stage performing with these dancers uh, that's what uh, Keys on the Street is about. So uh, I think I understand that, that she selected Claire de Lune. Is that how that went down, that she picked that track? and Because I know that she's doing Bach, and yes. she gave you music that she was wanting to do, and then yes. you, you responded with uh, the choreography? Yes. Um, when Yorn, myself, and Angela and our parties first spoke, we had to be very conscious that obviously as a pianist and someone who's world renowned, you know what you want and you know what, what feels best for you at that time. So instead of Yorn saying, you know, we want this and we want that, we went in there and said, you know, Angela, what would you like to play? And she gave us a list of different um, pieces and we went through and predominantly chose her yeah. program. But we also said, like, for instance, I, I really had a fascination with um, Ravel. Ravel. And I just, I found the, the, tr the, the piece to just be moving for a feminine dancer, which made us really go and hire a feminine, a female dancer. Because it was really important to have the street style of dance represented from a female perspective. So definitely lean, leaned on Angela a lot for the program. Well, we couldn't ask for a better uh, artist in, in Angela Hewitt performing her piano on piano with her piano it's she's playing her own instrument that, that she brings to all her shows the fazioli is delicious when you see it it's so beautiful <laughs> it's uh it's a great ingredient to your collaboration um Thank there's you. a question here um uh that is in staying with the thread what kind of challenges did you face uh choreographing to classical music a cla to a classical piece of music uh to that of urban music hmm well, I'm not sure if I got that question out. I think well, I understand <laughs> it. Like, w what kind of challenges are different, or, or do you, or might be even similar when you're doing? I think classical? it's the comparison of of mm -hmm. uh, choreographing uh, to classical versus. Uh, and if I botch this, uh, it's the question is from my boss, Janice Price. Ooh. So I apologize. Um, so uh, we're just trying to get to the meat of of the, the difference between mm -hmm. how you'd work with classical music versus urban music. From a choreographic standpoint, the process starts the same. You just press play. <laughs> press play on the song and without trying to create anything, you just let the music resonate with you and hit you. And um, the only difference with this is that I don't know the tracks. Yeah. I don't know the pieces heart yeah. by heart. Angela, it's, it's awesome to just watch her play the Goldberg variations off of memory. Yeah. She, she, she just gets it. 
I don't. Yeah. So the challenge was to night after night after night after day after day in my car have that track, that music track, that MP3 that I have on repeat. Let it seep in. Yeah, you have to. Even putting my baby to bed, I love to play jazz music for him. Well, for a good few weeks, he got classical. Yeah. And I just felt I fell more in love with it. And as I listen to it more, the the vision starts to pop up, um, which is the same for for Urban. The only difference is now that the vision's there, it's how to create the performance. And again, that was where I said. It's not about choreography from me. It's about a collaboration working with these great freestyle dancers <clears throat> who are street street dominant and experts in what they do. And that was basically the the biggest difference, leaning on the dancers as well as the creative visions to create the story that I have for the piece. Keys on the Street is the name that we came up with, and you just mentioned street dance. Uh, I know that in the process, because uh, in my role as part of the team, we. We talked about what to call the dance, and I'll admit I'm a little dance ignorant. So in terms of the, the terminology and the type mm -hmm. of dancers, urban dance, break dance, I mean, can you just take us around the block on that a little bit to, with some of the language? Sure. And maybe connecting it to the dancers that we'll see tonight. Sure. So, okay, so here we go. There's urban dance and there's street dance they can be interchanged but realistically street dance comprises of your your hip-hop which is commercially based because hip-hop's a culture it's not a, it didn't start as a dance it started as a culture and within the culture one of the elements of hip-hop was actually breaking the style of dance and then we just commercialized breaking it as a as in break dance. Okay. So in hip hop you have five elements and one of the elements is dance and right. their form of dance is breaking. Um, but now we call it break dance. And because we've commercialized hip hop so much to be mainstream, it just became a dance style all in itself. Mm -hmm. So you have hip hop, then you also have breaking, you have popping, you have locking. You also have something new that's more new age hip hop, um, finger tutting. Don't even ask me to start. It, it's I'm not good. I do not finger tut. But it's basically, instead of, I, I can't do it with my, my microphone on, but you're creating images with your hand tutting. Your fingers can do the same thing. And they start these fantastic ways of talking. Yeah. I it's fascinating. Yeah. It's not fascinating when I do it. <laughs> but it's fascinating when they do it and right. so there's those type of styles of dance as well so and we bring a little bit of more you know uh, fluid you know a little bit of African a little bit of house in there as well to, to hit every type of element of street dance that we can and taking it back to the connection to classical music the dancers adapted well to, to the to the repertoire did, um, did they or is it just a matter of you telling them what to do and they did it no, it's it, you, you know what, it's more at adaptation than me telling them. Of course, I'm going to say, this is what I need, this is what I want you to do, this move right here, and there's definitely a lot of that, but m dance, is, m dance is music for us. Music dances as much as we do as a dancer. So sometimes we don't have to do anything, and the music just tells us what to do. So for them, they just heard it, and they said, wait, hold on, play that again? I said, absolutely, repeat. Wait, 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 wait. Play that again? No problem. And we just let it seep in. Developing and, it. Yes. And then they become one with Naturally. the music. Yes. Very right organic. On. Right on. Um, I have a few more questions. Let's and do it. Some of them are kind of big picture um, uh, from Janet. I've got this. They're all kind of related. So you know, this is what I'm going to cluster. How do you see dance evolving in Canada? Um, what could be done to support dance mm. in Canada? And are there cool grass dance happenings that you are into right now? Ooh, okay. That's so a that's, a lot, that's a lot of questions. All right. How do I see dance evolving in Canada? I believe that we're one of the creative original hubs of the world. Um, a lot begins with us. We are the biggest incubators of talent, I think, worldwide in any genre of entertainment or even life. The only problem that I see with Canada is sustaining it and maintaining it. So that leads into the next question. What can we do to support it? What, yeah. can we do? what can we do? Broadcasters, networks, independent producers, listen up. Let's put some money back into our arts. 
You know, we, we lost So You Think You Can Dance Canada, and not just in the dance community, but in the culture of Canada, it was a huge loss. Uh, to this day, I still have people walking up to me, I just saw the auditions, your kids were great. And I said, no, I'm so sorry, those weren't our kids. But keep supporting. Right. Maybe there's something we can do to bring that show back or even evolve it and get to another style of show. I would love to see kids who are age 12 to 17 get on that stage and rip it up because their emotion is so raw and so organic. Um, and in terms of the last part of the, the question. Uh, if you could have a dream event or show, what would it look like? <sighs> My dream show, which I would love to do, would be the birth of a dancer. And I'd show the dancer from impregnation all the way through the process of pregnancy to the birth and then the afterbirth. And I do it in a very, I already know how I'd love to do it. Is this a special, like a one hour show? I would, yeah, yeah, I would yeah. love to do that. I have the concept there and video fact, um, factor, hi. Yeah. CBC, yeah. hi, all these people. I'm Great. sure hi. there's a producer out there <laughs> looking, looking for something to do. The, there, uh, there was a related question. Uh, do you think that there'll be another show? Like, so you think you could dance? And um, would you want to be involved? Oh, God, I hope. There is another show like that. If I could be, if I could have a huge hand in producing that, I'd be so honored. And would I be a part of it? Excuse my language, but hell yeah. I, like in a minute, I, I think that, no, I don't think. I know. We need that type of show back. We lost Canadian Idol. We lost So You Think You Can Dance Canada. We lost so many big artistic shows for the community to not just have the the artists get involved in a platform to have a voice but also the community to say oh my gosh we have super talent here let's support it and maintain it we need those shows back well tonight's show uh, keys in the street is going to be uh, putting you and a fine classical music artist together for something that's completely special um, and maybe that'll be a springboard and a platform for future projects and we hope to work with you again here at the festival. Um, I'm here with Trey Armstrong uh, talking about uh, an event taking place at the David Pico Square at the hub of uh, Luminato Festival. This is Luminato Live. We're going to wrap it up. Anything for your fans you want to send out to, as a message before we wrap? Yes. I miss you. I love you. I had a baby. That's why I've been gone for so long. But hey, I'm back. You can always follow me on Twitter. Do, 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 do. At, at Trey Armstrong. Doc, well, at Trey Armstrong, or was it my website, at Trey Armstrong.com? Just at Trey Armstrong, everything, and you'll find me on Facebook and everything. I'm glad we found you today. This, uh, I'm Derek Andrews. We'll be back with more Illuminato Live reports, and uh, <laughs> we'll tune in and uh, we'll tell you about what's going on behind the scenes at the Illuminato Festival. Thank you, Trey. <laughs> Thank you, Derek. <laughs> Great. Thank you.